<laughs> so friends we are back with our uh, educating platform adapt me we had talked about an experiment to be uh, rather to be designed in power system protection laboratory in engineering institutes comparatively at a very low cost we are seeing the fifth experiment now we had seen the radial feeder which was fed from one end now we were seeing parallel feeder because you see in practice mostly parallel feeders are there uh, the transmission, I mean, rows of transmission tower is going on. On one side, there will be RYB. On another side, there will be RYB. So from one city to another city, from place X to from place Y, if you want to transmit by single line, if you can transmit 100 megawatts, then by two lines, you can transmit 200 megawatts. That means using the same towers, you can transmit double the power no doubt the cost of insulator and the conductor will be there but tower cost will be saved so that is the reason why parallel feeders are very common practice you will see most of the feeders in power system networks to be parallel feeders but its protection is little complicated it's not as easy as radial feeder right and we have rather talk that all about in theory, uh, but uh, we are going to rig up an experiment here. You see, as I have been talking to you continuously uh, here, no doubt I have to talk, no, no, I have no go, but to talk on uh, YouTube videos. But seeing the YouTube videos, as yes, seeing the YouTube videos, no, you see, Tarla Dalla is showing that you can prepare a uh, something. Uh, you can prepare some some spice. Yes, you see, uh, using her video. Similarly, you can rig up an experiment using my video. And if at all you are in doubt, if at all you have any problem, my numbers, my mobile numbers, they are, I am available on WhatsApp also, and my email number is given. So, friends, yes, parallel feeder. So, any experiment must have motivation. The motivation is simple. We have talked about the demand of electrical energy is increasing day by day. We want more and more power. So using an existing transmission line, if you want to increase the capacity, the only way or rather the way available right now is using the parallel transmission line. So that's what we are doing. And now we would want to rig up an experiment on parallel transmission line. We would want to calculate the LS settings. And also, uh, we would uh, not only we would calculate the LS settings, but uh, we would carry out an experiment. We will see backup. We will see everything in parallel feeder production. Once again, this is a single phase version. We do not want to go to three phase version immediately now. We will go to, in none of the experiments, we will go to three phase version, but it is going to be a little complicated. And that we are going to go in numerical relay. And uh, that numerical relay experiment cannot be completed in half an hour or even 45 minutes or even an hour. I was taking eight hours. So there will be about eight tutorial classes, seven to eight tutorial classes for that experiment slowly but anyway right now this parallel feeder yes going further uh, theoretical but theoretical background not much because in in practice we do not want to talk much about theory 
in the production of parallel feeders is somewhat complex than the ideal feeder we talked about. For fault occurs on one of the feeders, the fault current will flow from both the directions due to presence of another feeder connected in parallel. So what happens that uh, the healthy line may also trip. So to avoid that, we have to add the directional feature in simple overcurrent and earth fault release. 66 and 11 kV lines are using only overcurrent and earth fault release. Therefore, there the directional feature is a must. In distance release, it is different. We'll talk when we when we come to distance release. Yes. A very simple figure. Very simple. Source. Source means you can have your phase and neutral, right? Simplified parallel feeders. No doubt we'll see a, a feeder which is uh, which we are going to use in pr uh, practical class. But we have four relays, R1, R2, R3, R4. R3 and R4 have to be directional that we have talked about. This is because when fault occurs at F1, our fault pass path is A to F1 and R1 will operate. Anyway, R1 has to operate. That is correct because that fault has to be isolated from that end. But R3 also has to operate. For R3, what is the path? A, R2, R4, R3 and F1. Now R4 and R3 both will operate. If you want to avoid the operation of R4, the time of operation of R4 should be more than R3, but that you just can't do because if fault occurs at F2, you would want that time of operation of R3 should be more than R4. Therefore, R3 and R4 will operate at the same time, their TMS is the same, their plug setting is the same, but they are assigned direction. Direction means if the fault flows away from the bus, then the relay will operate. If the fault flows towards the bus, even if the current is a fault current, even if the current is more than plug setting, relay won't operate. It will block. So if you talk about F1, then your my fault path is A, R2, R4, R3, F1. R4, it is wrong direction. Therefore, R4 will not operate. R3 will correctly operate. So R1 and R3 for F1 will correctly operate, R2 and R4 for fault F2 will correctly operate. But now backup. If R3 fails, then who will give backup? R4 cannot because it is not operating. Therefore, R2 will R2 will give backup. Then the relay R2 will give backup. Therefore, when R3 does not operate, R2 will give backup. So you will have to grade them. R3 and R2 as you are grading in radial feeder, you have to grade them. Similarly, R1 will backup R4, right? Now, you may say that if fault occurs at F1, if R1 fails, then who will give backup? If, if R1 fails, then the, uh, the, the protective system in generator end will give uh, rather the backup, right? So this is what you have to understand. So um, this is all what uh, I talked about when the fault occurs, uh, then what should happen? Why R3 and R4 are required to be directional? That is explained here. I'm not repeating. You can see when you see the video, you can pause the video and you can see. If all the relays are IDMT over current relays, then our problem is there, right? Uh, that I told you that in one case I want R4 to be later than R3, in other case R3 to be later than R4. Both the things are not possible and therefore uh, both the things are not possible uh, and obviously therefore uh, F2, uh, therefore R3 and R4 have to be given the same TMS, but the directional feature. That is what has been explained, right? So this is, I think, uh, the repetition. Uh, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will leave, leave this repetition because by by mistake, two slides have been repeated. Laboratory simulation, what I am doing, because you see. 
in in practice there is there are big things in laboratory it is a small scaled model generator what is my generator my 220 volt ac supply is generator 220 volt 50 hertz ac supply is a generator parallel feeders for parallel feeders what i do i take 29 ohms 12 ampere rheostat in one line two rheostats in another line Two rheostat nine ohm. means a line is of 18 ohms of impedance. Once again, because these are over current relays, I am not interested in phase angle, and therefore I am not uh, simulating a line by reactor. When we will come to distance production, we will uh, yeah, we will rather simulate uh, by reactors. Circuit breaker we cannot procure. We will procure contactors. Faults we will create by switches S1 and S2. I will I will show you faults. You will oh for that that figure is yet to come. Fault we will create by switches S1 and S2, right? Faults we will create by switches S1 and S2. Uh, uh, fault impedance. Because when fault occurs, the line-to-line -line fault, flash over path will be there. When line-to-ground fault occurs, there will be iron resistance, flash flash over path, plus the uh, soil resistivity. So that I have assumed to be nine ohms, and I am using physical nine ohm resistors. Field CTs are ten by five. Actually, there will be hundred by five or thousand by five. Yeah, it is ten by five. And as I told you, here also my CT secondary is five ampere and relay rating is one ampere, which is contrary to practice because always CT secondary current and relay rated current must be same. But here I need this because when I pass ten ampere, five ampere is the current, and if my relay is set at one ampere, and if the relay is of one ampere, then It will be five times the plug, uh, setting. Therefore, relay will operate. Otherwise, if I use five ampere CT, then for five times I will have to pass twenty five. And if I want to pass twenty five for on ten side, five times means I have to pass fifty ampere. Fifty ampere is too big a current. I will have to have very big wires, and the cost of the experiment will be very high. My my aim is to. Decrease the cost. Therefore, I am going against the practice in this case. Indicators are there. Semaphore indicators are there. Load I use 185 ohm rheostat. That's what is my load, right? Load will be there in field also, but it will be a big load, 1000 ampere, 500 ampere, 100 ampere. Here it will be 1.5 ampere only because it's a scaled down model. So, friends. This is the laboratory simulations, right? What we do that we have a nine ohm resistors too, and if we refer to figure three point four, that is control circuit, the relays A one, A two, A three, A four will operate to isolate the fault, to trip the contactors, and backup can be given by shorting the relevant CT secondary. Here in radial feeder we have kept switches. Here we are using another idea. Our CTs have CT secondary shorting arrangement. What we do? We short the CT secondary. The the, the relay uh, which we do not want to operate. So that relay will not operate, and the other relay will give backup. So another way of uh, rather simulating a backup because you cannot uh, rather. Uh, damage the relay because you have to do experiment many times in a, in in institute uh, there will be there will be four batches and many students will be doing experiment so you have to simulate the backup right? the circuit can be set by except push pattern as as we shall be seeing in the circuit so now this is the ac circuit 230 volt 50 hertz ac supply C1 is the contact of contactor C1, right? I have C, uh, C1. C2 is the contact of contactor C2, like that. C3 and C4. I've got four uh, breakers. I've got relays R1, R2, R3, R4, R5, and R6 are the 
The current coils five and six are the potential coils. It does not say that in all relays it will be like that. You have to see the relay terminal designation diagram. Uh, my transmission line is 18 ohms and uh, fault I am creating on last part of 9 ohm because if I do it on first part then source will be shorted. Therefore, I am doing in uh, later part of uh, 9 ohm rev set and I can do it anywhere because I am doing by variable cursor. By using switch S1 and S2, I can create fault either in line 1 or line 2. 9 ohm is the fault resistance, 185 ohm is the, uh, the load resistance. Please note that R3 and R4 are directional relay and therefore they have to be fed by, they have to be fed by PT. Therefore, the PT circuit is being fed to the the relays, I mean PT, PT, that means 230 by 110 volt or 220 by 110 volt PT, I had to use in this experiment. So you have to procure, obviously, 220 by 110 volt, 10 by 5 cities, you have to procure. Contactors, you have to procure. If you don't have rheostats in laboratory, you have to procure. 185 ohm rheostat is quite common, usually you should have in laboratory. So, if you just see, the experimental cost is not very, very big, you see, you just see. This is the control circuit. What is the control circuit? If I want to make C1 on, I should be able to make it on. I, if I want to make C2 on, C3, C4, I should be able to make it on. Say C1, I will, how will I make it on? Press the push button PB. Now, PB is a spring-loaded push button. If you leave your hand, it will come back. So, once you push PB, another PB, PB2 is NC button. The A11, 7 and 11 contacts are NC contact. Therefore, C1 will be energized. And because C1 will be energized, your line C1 will be through up to 9 ohm rheostat. Right? C1 will be through up to 9 ohm rheostat. Another thing that uh, if I, if you want to make it off manually, push button PB, red push button you have to push, then it will be off. Automatic uh, on or rather automatic operation of the breaker, how will it open? That is shown in the other slide. But when C1 operates, its indicator is also on. So you should come, you come to know that C1 is operated. Similarly, C2, C3, C4 can be operated and the whole parallel feeder is operated. And you have to feed the uh, you know, PT supply. So 230, 220 by 110 volt PT is used. Uh, another context uh, of A2, A1, A2, A3, A4 are used to give indication or alarm, whatever you want, you can give. Here it is only single alarm, but actually A1 is at one place, A2 is at another place because they are different places, 100 kilometer apart. So you will have to use four alarms or four lamps. But here, because in laboratory I have got only single table, I am using single lamp. I hope, uh, I mean, it is not very difficult to understand this circuit. Semaphore indicators are also given, right? So, semaphore indicator uh, or indicating lamp, whatever you want to use, you can use. So, how will the, oh, I mean, so to say the uh, automatic operation, that is when the fault occurs, when the fault occurs, R1 will operate or R2 will operate, or R3 will operate, wherever the fault occurs, right? That will operate. That will operate. So, IVS, the shunt reinforcing unit will operate. Shunt reinforcing unit operating, you can see. R1 operates, yes, please, I will go. R1 operates, so IVS will operate. IVS operating, IVS is a shunt reinforcing unit. So, positive shunt reinforcing unit, this, this, this. A1 will operate. Because A1 operates, A1 operates, A11 will open out and therefore C1 will, will open. Therefore, my fault is cleared. This is how automatic operation occurs, right? But once the fault is cleared, the R1 is going to reset. 
and if our is going to reset, then there will be chattering. That should not happen. So what I am doing? I am using another contact A13, A12 and A4 to hold on A1 and I can rather release A1 only through PB3 and C push button PB3. That is a must, right? IVS will operate in, in a time delayed way. That means if the fault current is low, the current will be, I mean, the time of operation will be time delayed. But if there is an instantaneous operation, then IHT will operate and that will give the trip signal instantaneously. This is how the whole, whole, whole circuit behaves. This is also, you see, a simple thing, parallel feeder, which we are seeing in field and which people are going to see in field, that I am making the students to understand in, in my experimental class. But teacher should be fine. Teacher should be knowing everything. Teacher should be foolproof. He has to describe everything properly and then he has to get the experiment carried out properly and he has to tell the significance that whatever you are doing here, what is there that in the field? Contactor is not there in the field. There is a breaker in the field. And when breaker is in the field, breaker is a different arrangement. For making the breaker on, there is a closing coil. And for tripping the breaker, there is a tripping coil. There are two different coils. Whereas for contactor, there is a single coil. Either you energize the contactor or you de-energize the contactor. So these things a teacher has to, has to rather tell the students so that students are very, uh, very intelligent. They know everything. One of my students went to Baroda after passing his B and he wanted to go to Jyoti Limited for uh, interviewing. He had, he had got an interview through uh, off, off campus or on campus, I don't know. But he, he received an interview at Jyoti Limited, Baroda. Uh, so his friend was there and his friend's father was staying at Baroda. So he told that you come with me tonight, we will stay together and tomorrow we will go for uh, another interview together. So when he went to his friend, his father was a businessman and he was doing the same business protection. So he asked many questions to my student. He asked all the questions. He asked answers to all the questions. And he shows my book also. At that time, it was not book. It was a cyclo style or Xerox pamphlet. So he showed that, that the person was stunned. He told that if Jyoti is not taking you, come to me. You are employed. You are employed. So that is what happens. That is what teacher can do. C40, C41 closes means it will give hold on path to the push button because push button is going to be released. Right? And uh, PB2, if you push, then you can de-energize the circuit. Right? And uh, then you have to have a uh, reset push button to reset the auxiliary relay. So like that, there are three push buttons in the experiment, right? What is the description of the control circuit? I told. Description of the control circuit, I just told. So I don't repeat this slide. I, I would once again request you that if you have not understood when I was speaking, everything is written here. You can see the YouTube video. You can pause here and you can read at your at your leisure. But right now I am skipping because I told all these things. Now the main thing is you will have to calculate. You have to correctly calculate your, so that your system operates correctly. What is the requirement? All the four relays should operate as fast as possible. As fast as possible. But as selectively. Selectively means correct relay should operate. Wrong relay should not operate. For that, Setting calculation is a very critical exercise. So what you will do, calculate the normal current. Then plug setting of the relay should not be done on the basis of this value. If setting is done based on this value, that means fault load current is passing in both the feeders. So if total load current is 100 ampere, 50 ampere, 50 ampere is passing. If you decide your plug setting based on 50 ampere, you are wrong. Because if one line trips due to fault, 
then complete 100 ampere will pass through remaining line which is healthy. Now you may say that double the current, say this I am talking about 100 ampere but through transmission line 1000 ampere also may be passing and double the current may be 2000 ampere. You may tell that the line will be damaged. No, line will not be damaged. Because because of 2000 ampere, whatever temperature is going to temp develop, your SCSR conductor is not going to melt because the melting point of SCSR conductor is very high. So forget about melting. Then failure of insulation. What insulation for transmission line? You see in transformer you can say, in induction motor you can say, but transmission line, air is the insulation. Air at NTP is the insulation, right? So, uh, more current is passing means air will become hot. Hot air will go up because it is less dense. New cold air will come. So, air is never going to break down, right? And the, uh, the wires are suspended at porcelain insulator. The, uh, the temperature withstand of porcelain is also very large. So, double the current. No problem. I don't mean to say that you will pass double the current for a very long time. At the other end, you are seating, uh, uh, an engineer is seating. You will see that one of the line is stripped and another is being uh, overloaded. So he will give proper instructions to, uh, to proper instructions to uh, rather do not steady. But load shedding will take time because load shedding cannot be done at 220 kV or 132 kV substation. It has to be done at 11 kV substation. There are 10 feeders going out and some th three unimportant feeders can be tripped at every 11 kV substation. So that takes 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes. And within that time, if the other healthy feeder trips, that is wrong. Therefore, your setting has to be based on Single line contingency. My friends, we have done an exercise on configuration of uh, numerical relay in which we have seen that possibility of double groups are there. Therefore, if only one line is operating, then double the current will pass. So, plug setting is accordingly done. And if current is passing through both the lines, half half current will pass, then plug setting will be half. So, change of plug setting is possible in numerical relays but not in electromagnetic or static relays. Right now, we go for old relays. So, we consider the single line contingency. Since the settings are based on load current, uh, the, uh, the relays pertaining to this feeder will also operate, resulting the... Uh, because, you see, yeah, double the current is passing through the other feeder and if you kept the plug setting low, then that will trip and LD line will trip. So that is wrong. So that is what we have to keep in mind. So right now we start calculating. 230 is my voltage, 185 ohm is my resistance. So my normal load current is 1.2 for a period. Try to understand that in actual practice, normal load current can never be 1.2 for a period. It will be 12, 40 ampere or so. But here we have scaled down. 1.24 ampere is the... Now I'm taking single line contingency. Try to understand. One line off. One line off. So, 230 by 185 means one line is off. Huh? So, I am not taking one line at all. So, CT secondary equivalent will be half of that because my CT is 10 by 5. So, 0.62 and therefore I should select 75%. I should select 70. And because R3 is backing up, uh, sorry, R1, uh, R1 is uh, backing up R1 is backing up R4, R3 is backing up R4. Let me see. Uh, there is something wrong, some typographical mistake. R1, R1. R1 is backing up R4, right? R1 is backing up. So here, instead of R3, it should be R, R1. Uh, right? So uh, R1, R3 and R4, R1 and R2 is 0 0.62, 75%. You may say that why not R3, R4? Why did not I do R3, R4? 
because I was here for his first R3, R4. I did not do because my normal rated current is passing from left to right and that is inoperative direction. So even if that current is more than plug setting, they are not going to operate. So I am not worried. So my normal load current with one line contingency was the plug setting of R1 and R2. So plug setting of R1 and R2 I have found out. Plug setting of R1 and R2 that is what I have found out is 0.62 and next available is 75%. For R3 and R4, it is reverse, less than 1.05 by 1.3 of 0.62. So it is 0 0.5007. Less than 0 0.5007 is 0.5, that is 50%. So 50% and 75% are my answers. Whatever. For calculating TMS, R1 is to be coordinated with R4 and R2 is to be coordinated with R2. The Equivalent circuit is shown in the next slide. See, this is this is what happens. I have to create a fault immediately after R4. See, this line, two lines, top line R1, bottom line R2, right side R3, top, bottom R4, right? So, I have to make a fault immediately after R4. So, after the renumeration. So if you want to do that, you will have to calculate the fault current IF by 2 and IF by 2 because total fault current IF is going to be divided by two parts, right? My fault current is 230 by 18. Why 230 by 18? Because my resistance is 9 ohm and 9 ohm, 18 ohm, parallel 18 ohm, that is 9 ohm, plus 9 ohm of, of ohm, another fault is so 18, so 12.77 ampere. Current flowing through CTs, uh, R1 and R4, because they are concerned that R4 is okay. R1 is going to give back up to R4. Therefore, 12.77, that is what I have calculated, divided by 2. 12.77, let me check, check up 12.77, I had 12.77, 12 I have calculated. So, uh, point, uh, I will be reducing that to 2 because CTs are 10 by 5. So 6.39 ampere is going to pass through R1 and R2. So for that, so not only R1 and R2, for R4 also same current is passing, R3 also same current, R3 is not going to operate but same current is passing. Therefore now what happens is, I will calculate PSM of R1 or R2 and PSM of R3 and R4 for 6.39. 6.39 is the uh, primary current, so secondary current 10 by 5 is 3.195 and 3.195 divided by 0.75 because R1 and R2 are set at 75%. So PSM is 4.26. Similarly, PSM of R3 and R4 is 6.39. Now, we have to start with some, some, some relay. So, R3 and R4 are last relays. So, R3 and R4, I assume TMS 0.1. If I assume TMS 0.1, 3 upon log PSM into TMS. That's what I've done. I found out 0.37 for R4. So R1 backing up 0.25 more, 0.62 second. And for that 0.62 second, if you find out the TMS, it is coming out to be 0.13. And therefore, you we are selecting 0.15. R3 is sorry, R4 is 0.1 and R1 is 0.15. Because our system is symmetrical. R1 is 0.15 means R2 is also 0.15, R3 is 0.1, therefore R4 is also 0.1. Probably uh, we will we'll tabulate the setting so that you may come to know that this is what we have calculated. This is our critical calculation for single load 185 ohm. You see, uh, in experiments, you see, if you give only single thing, then everybody will copy. So don't do that. To one group of two or three students give resistance 185 ohm. To second group give 100 ohm. To third group give 50 ohm. Something like that you can go on changing the load resistance. Right? To give different exercises. 
then plug setting and time multiplier setting for R1, R2, R3, R4 will be different. Let everybody do experiment in their own way, right? So that they understand. So this is the. So what will be the performance? Once the relays are set, we have as per setting, create the fault by switch S1 in feeder 1 and then see that uh, relay R1 and R3 tips, the relevant breaker trip, similarly for S2, R2 and R4 trip, relevant breaker trip. For backup, R1 should be backup to R4. For that, short the CT secondary of CT of R4. Then R4 will not operate and R1 will be backup after certain time which you have designed, right? Which you have designed. So that you can so similarly F3 can be similar, fault can be simulated. Yes, sir. Uh, so this is uh, this is what you can you can do. Uh, then you can tabulate these things so that you can understand you had created fault by closing S1, S2, S1, S2. When you closed S1, CT secondary was not closed. It I mean was not shorted. Therefore, which relays will operate for case number one when fault occurs S1, top one, R1 and R3 will operate. R2 and R4 will not operate. Make that remark. For S2, similarly make remark. S1, CT3 is secondary, is sorted. Therefore, fault is at F1. But R3 will not operate. Therefore, R2 will give backup. So, R1 and R2 will operate. In both lines will trip. But we are helpless because the fault has occurred and backup has to be given. So, this is how you can give backup to the whole thing. What is the conclusion of the experiment? Parallel feeder protection operates as desired without any maloperation. R1 backs up R4 and R2 backs up R3. Yes, sir, that we have seen by our eyes. This we have wired ourselves. You see, most of the experiment is permanently wired. What, what all we have to wire is uh, some fault resistance and some load resistance only that you have to wire. Wiring is not much, but understanding is more. Understanding out of the experiment is more. An application of directional overcurrent relays can be can be appreciated. Why directional feature is required that you can appreciate using this. So friends, with uh, this I am coming to an end of this tutorial class of parallel feeder protection. We are we are designing one more experiment parallel feeder protection. We'll be designing some 13, 14 experiments. So for any good institutes, 13 or 14 experiments are quite good and they can do very nicely these experiments if they dig up. All, all details required are given in this video itself, but however, if you find any difficulty, you are most welcome to contact me. So with that, <clears throat> a, a, a thought for the day. Truth is not something outside to be discovered. Thought by Osho Rajneesh. Truth is not something discovered, something outside to be discovered. Satya is not outside. Truth is not outside. It is something inside to be realized. You have to realize that truth. It is realized. It is within. It is within you. It is not outside. Satya bahar nahi hai. Satya andar hai. Right. So the friends repeatedly I am trying that remember adapt me. Uh, stay tuned with head up me see the videos share the videos to as many people as possible uh, my subscription on head up me is uh, some 1.2.5k i want to see 10k 1.25k is too small my maximum view of my own videos power system protection is uh, i think some 4k views are there i want 4m views not 4k views because the whole world is hearing right uh, if i see the uh, viewers 
the viewer says has reached to some 500 or 600. I want 5,000 or 50,000 viewers. And for doing this, my friends can help. My friends on LinkedIn, my friends on Facebook, my friends on WhatsApp, my very dear, very near, very loving students, 2000 students of BBM Engineering College can help. Now, my very good students of PDPU, PDEU, I should say, Pandit Dindal Energy Institute can help. My very loving students and teachers of Nirma Institutes can help. Many engineering colleges, most of the students of Gujarat Engineering Colleges are known to me. Most of the teachers, they can help me out. Please spread the knowledge. One person should spread the knowledge to 100,000. Then end up me will spread, right? And it is not so that I am marketing. It's not so that I am doing advertisement. I am doing advertisement, but at no cost, at no cost. I am, I am teaching you free of cost. A very important exercise. I am teaching you free of cost. So friends, th thank you so much. Thank you very much for hearing me, for patient hearing. Goodbye, good day. Some, some 45 minutes we have taken. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Remember Adapt Me. Remember Aptrace. It is a company of my sons. Thank you, everybody.